Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube and welcome back to another edition of my video today with webcam. Ooh, exciting stuff, exciting stuff. Well, today I present to you a uh, bit of a crazy game uh, that's, you know, you know, I'm known for my crazy games. I like playing crazy stuff and um, in particular I I've been looking uh, into a bit of detail into a player uh, known as Emil Dima, a bit of a weird player, shall we say. Uh, he went uh, clinically insane, um, but one of the things that was nice was that his chess was absolutely crazy, and uh, he loved playing gambits and loved playing different, weird, unorthodox ideas. And um, in particular, he quite liked playing what is known as the elephant gambit. So we're going to see one game that I had in the elephant gambit. It was a total terrible game <laughs> well it's all right it's all right but blunders left right and center but it's still a very very exciting game let's see how it went so uh there was obviously e4 e5 knight to f3 and then d5 the elephant gambit is it any good well let's find out uh what happens here so after e takes d5 this is the main line e4 now this pawn is a bit of a fawn in white side. Um, essentially, the sort of strategy with uh, for black would be to either hold on to this pawn as long as he can, or give it up, but at the same time generate enough initiative uh, to overwhelm white's forces. So let's see how he does this. So um, let's go to queen to e2, which is the main line. So the idea of this is uh, exploiting the fact that this pawn is now pinned to the queen, king. I played knight to f6, knight to c3, and here I played uh, bishop to f5. Uh, it's not actually a great move. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm still sort of learning some of my lines in this. It's uh, incredibly sharp, uh, some of the positions. Uh, but bishop to f5 is actually no good. In fact, actually, the best move here is to, in fact, sacrifice this pawn here um, and just continue with our development. So I'll just show you an example line. Let's say uh, knight here. We then castle. Uh, move like d3, let's say. And, uh, well, we take, take back this pawn. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, one of the moves here is actually to play um, queen to d1. The problem for white is this bishop here on, on f1 is essentially stuck. By playing this queen move, you're then sort of uh, slowing down your development significantly. But also there's another tactical responsibility that uh, a white will need to know about. Obviously, this rook can come onto this open file deliver lots and lots of damage to white. Um, so that's why, you know, a move like this needs to be played. And then, you know, something like, I don't know, knight to c6, followed by rook to e1 uh, does okay. Maybe the knight would come back to here. And I don't know, queen to, uh, to d7, d6 looks okay. Or even just coming over to here, maybe. That looks interesting. But in any case, um, black is down a pawn. But he's got a bit of a nice lead in development. So in actual fact, there's a little bit of compensation here to play for. OK, so going back to what was actually played in the game, um, there was knights to d4. Really nice move as it's now hitting uh, this bishop and uh, getting out of that threat now. So I've no longer got uh, this threat uh, as an idea. Uh, I move my bishop back to g6. Couldn't really think of anything too much better. The computer here is recommending g6, which just looks horrible. But I guess uh, I guess that's that's the computers for you. And now this queen to b5 move came in, and I was like, oh, actually, I think I've made a little bit of a mistake here. As now, as you can see here, it's forking both the uh, king and also the b7 pawn. But then I kind of sort of thought about it a little bit longer and I thought, well, actually, maybe it's not so bad. Um, I would give up maybe a couple of my pawns and just get on with my development and see if I can try and outplay um, white with the amount of activity. Bear in mind here, you may notice white's uh, back row pieces are still stuck at home for the time being. So in actual fact, you know, I can just use this initiative to my advantage. In any case, I played my knights to d7. And here my opponent took on b7, and then I played my rook to 
b8. I'm tempting white to capture this pawn here. Uh, I really wanted him to do this as it allows me to essentially fork both his queen and his knight. The challenge for me at the moment in this particular position and um, you know something I potentially overlooked in my calculations is white always has this c6 idea uh, forking you know the queen the rook basically causing me lots of problems um, so keep in mind that threat as that becomes a bit of a uh, a crucial point in this game so the queen took on a7 why not it's a free pawn let's take it and now I played my bishop to c5 I'm thinking oh yes this looks good for black I was thinking I've got this knights under attack this queen is under attack I think I should be doing absolutely fine here or so I thought so going to the game the queen came to a4 uh, so it's still defending this um, this knight and now I played rook to uh, to b4 hitting the queen um, maybe slightly better was rook to a8 I wanted to set up a quick look and see what that moves like because again the queen I'm getting another tempo on the queen um, let's have a look what would be best for black here uh, I'm just having a look at what the engine recommends at this point queen to c4 interesting so now hitting this well, I mean, it's defended, so it's it's all right. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe play play can just continue there, but I, I quite like this idea. I thought fantastic. I've got in the way of the queen. This knight is going to fall. Well, he's either got a choice. He can either lose the knight or lose the rook. Uh, sorry, lose the queen. So um, my my expectation was that he was going to play maybe a move like uh, queen to. Uh, a a free for example after which i would then capture i'm up a clear piece well i'm actually not actually there's is actually even a material would you believe it um but uh, i've still got the initiative going here i'm still attacking the queen in fact this queen would have to keep dancing around the board uh, before he gets any form of sanctuary in this position so Anyway, let's go back. So what was played? My opponent played a fantastic move here. Well, there's two good moves here. In actual fact, queen takes on b4 is absolutely fine as well. As after this capture, there's this lovely knight to c6 move. It's now forking both the queen and the knight. So in actual fact, white um, regains quite a lot of material. So after I move my queen, let's say to a8, We've then got this uh, knight captures on b4. Would you believe it? White is up in material here. He's up two uh, points in material. And it's certainly a playable position for white. He just needs to work out how he's going to get his pieces, <laughs> how he's going to get these guys out, I should say, out of the back rank. But if he can, he should do absolutely fine in this position. My only compensation is the fact that I'm one move away from castling and completing my development and maybe I can create some counterplay. So let's go back. That wasn't played though. My opponent found an even better move and it's very similar to the move that we just saw. He played knights to c6. What a move. So he's now hitting my queen. He's hitting my rook. Um, a move like this just doesn't work. Uh, although it is said the best move, in actual fact, uh, I didn't want to play it as after knight takes uh, here, I take, let's say I take back with the king, um, he can then recapture this rook. He is just uh, so far ahead in this position. Um, I don't think there's really anything much better in this particular variation. After this, maybe I can move my rook back. Uh, after which, you know, the knight just comes back to c6. I think white is doing fine here. Um, there's not a whole lot I can do. You know, this this pawn here is a bit of a menace. It's just all anchors in this beautiful outpost knight that he has here. And in any case, if I do decide, oops, not over there. If I do decide to castle, there's some other problems. Oh no, this bishop's there, isn't it? So it defends it. So maybe not. <laughs> maybe that's not a move. But it's still uh, very, very difficult to dislodge this knight. In actual fact, the computer here is recommending going to b8 to try and remove it. In which case, this is still favourable for white. He's up three points in material. Um, he'll be looking to exchange. So white is doing better here.
So going back to the position. So here I made a very bold, very rash decision. It probably wasn't the best move, but I thought in this situation where I'm about to lose some material, why not go all guns blazing? I took here on F2, a mistake, but a very difficult mistake to have to face here. Now, I was really worried about the potential of maybe king to d1, just getting out of this fret. In actual fact, um, this is still pretty good for white. After I capture, notice here, you know, we've still got all these different exchanges. The rook coming back to a8, um, white is still fine. He's actually only up two points of material as opposed to three. So I was a little bit worried about that potential idea. But here he decided to capture, which is still the best move, uh, as we'll find out. Now here I now chuck in a check and notice my queen is now activated along this diagonal. This is my idea. I was going to maybe throw in a check and then take his queen because notice my knight, this knight will no longer be threatening my queen here. He moved to g3, a very weak move, as it allows me now to put my queen to g5. But this is also a mistake. This is also not working either. Um, in fact, king to g3 is still fine white is should be able to survive here i was i was again worried about a move like king king to e1 and again the best move here is just having to capture and being down materially but by playing this it gave me some hope i moved my queen to g5 now i'm threatening some types of different forks different discoveries and various other things that uh, white will need to consider he then took my rook which is in fact a blunder. I now throw in a check. King came to f2. I throw in another check. King came to e1. These are all the best moves. Notice as well, actually, if he goes here, and this is in fact a quite embarrassing move as now I can throw in a checkmate. So just something to bear in mind. But he went to this square. And now I have this check. <laughs> and notice this queen is now under attack. So after king here, I took the queen. Uh, but the problem here is I'm still down materially. Ah. <sighs> So close, so close. But the position is actually relatively equal here. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not as bad as some of the other variations that um, we saw earlier. As uh, well, essentially, I've got a little bit more activity. My queen is on the prowl. This king is still a little bit stuck here, and uh, well, I've also got a pawn out of it as well. So you know, oh, isolated this pawn as well, and this pawn is a little bit of a problem for White to have to try and deal with, and we'll see later on. Um, White gets himself into some problems with it. So e3, e, probably not the best move, but nonetheless, Knight came to d3, now hitting my queen. I took this off. I couldn't think of anything better here. My idea here was to maybe, um, by sacrificing this, maybe try and win back this this pawn somehow. But also if I captured here, after the bishop captures, I can then jump my knight in here. So I took, and he took back with his bishop. I was a little bit worried about moves like this. Um, does this actually... No, it doesn't at all. Of course, I've got to check, haven't I? So... Yeah, that's not good at all, which is some things you have to be a little bit worried about. Um, I now put my knight to c5, so now hitting this bishop. Bishop came back to e3. Um, again, probably the check was probably slightly better. I think actually this, this move is quite interesting. Is after I move to d1, um, there are some ideas of just anchoring his bishop here, which uh, he does do later in this position. But going back, so bishop came back, I put my knight to e3, e4, trying to exchange this off and maybe I can get back one of these central pawns which at the very least uh, just sort of slows down any counterplay. He took, I took back and now the bishop came to c5, a really good move here as this now allows um, him to tuck his bishop onto c6 in the moment but after play d8 in actual fact bishop to c6 is in fact a mistake <gasps> 
The problem with this was what White should have considered is the potential of this e3 pawn. So now I have a beautiful tactic here. e2, king came to e1, there's no other moves, it's a totally forced this move. And now I capture here on g2. So now this rook is going to potentially fall. There was a move that I think actually saves this position. He played... Um, here uh, d3 which probably wasn't too good I actually think you could probably do this move to maybe hold the position because notice here now this bishop is defending this rook so I'd have to take this back and well all things considered it's still not a great position for for whites um, I'm then going to be capturing this back getting my rook to this open e file where if this rook if this king ever captures this pawn he's going to come under some heavy fire so uh yeah and the, obviously this rook is still <laughs> still hanging in this position so you know potentially you'd have to do a move like this uh rook to e8 now holds on to this uh fawn of a pawn uh fawn pawn i like i like that fawn pawn right so going back um, in the game though he just decides to sack the rook I uh, capture another pawn and now I'm l I'm winning here very comfortably but it's still a bit of a tough tough game to have to play here notice this bishop actually controls quite a lot of good key squares here particularly this e8 square um, which I would love to have my rook on but obviously uh, this uh, well this this bishop defends the square so um, I had some ideas of maybe just pushing some of these pawns forward and then just going to promote but uh, I thought I maybe get my rook activated first which is uh, what I did in this game I'm just going to kind of speed through the rest of the game is not a huge and much huge amount to uh, see here I'm now hitting this pawn one of the nice things about this G uh, one of the problems with this B3 move is uh, by playing this it allows me to fork both the pawn and the rook so the rook came here I took this pawn bishop came here and I play this nice move bishop to b4 the idea of this being that his bishop can't capture as um, it's obviously pinned to here and you know I'm going to just be threatening ideas just like this his rook came to c3 I threw in a check which actually uh, wasn't all that good as after the rook came back I suddenly realized oops my rook is under attack now so I had to come back to the square, rook came back, and then I went the other way. And uh, now I'm starting to slowly gang up on this bishop. He played this check. I moved my king here. It was absolutely safe here. He now played this uh, this pawn move with the idea of uh, potentially, this is actually a checkmating idea, so something I've got to be a bit careful of. Well, obviously the rook defends it, but... Um, I wouldn't want to give up my rook for a bishop, so I threw in this uh, this pin now. Um, we've now got a lot of pieces. He had to sacrifice his rook now, but now I go after the rook. I thought, why not go for a bigger piece? This bishop came with a check. I moved my king forwards. Bishop came back, and now I decided to uh, to throw in cash in on the rooks trade off the rooks I've now got a queen versus two bishops which should be winning for me and in the game I now recaptured this pawn which was causing me problems earlier and now I just uh, slowly push my advantage here I just end up uh, pushing this pawn up and after this my opponents after this check he I believe resigned here uh, there's no way of stopping this pawn from coming to uh, g1 what a scintillating game i mean it all started quite crazily you know when we kind of go back into the position you know from the, from this craziness <laughs> um just loads of loads of fireworks um i really like this tactical um onslaught here that i had to sort of try and deal with but i, I think i got very lucky with uh my opponents um, not playing probably the most accurate defending moves for his king but nonetheless we managed to survive this position and managed to win the game. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this Elephant Gambit game and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.